Hey guys, this is Mark Pillard. In this video, we'll be talking about the process of retrieving data from the backend into our sample application. Uh, previously in these videos, I have discussed the UI for the login screen and the API for logging the user in. And also we discussed the registration API and the registration form. So now that we have modules for user registration and then subsequent login, the next logical step is to discuss how the data can be loaded from the backend and displayed in the UI. This is the same project that we reviewed also previously that contains various modules and each module is a logical progression uh, over the course of building this application. So previously we looked into registration and then login. Login includes registration. And the next step will be the restaurant list module. And restaurant list includes the, pre the previous two, both registration and login. To remind you what the UI for the restaurant list looks like, I'm going to go into the layout and open up activity restaurant listing. This is the UI of the restaurant listing screen. And you see there is a collection of uh, individual items and then a list item is uh, has the following design where we have the restaurant name, the cuisine that that restaurant serves, and the number of locations with a with a button to navigate to the specific location listing. So here, of course, the code will be to retrieve all the restaurants and render them accordingly. Also, let's take a look at what the data looks like on the back end. Here I have uh, in the console, we have six restaurants and uh, the project includes the zip file that you can import into your backend, so you will have exactly the same data. Now, uh, from the code perspective, let me show you how a user gets to the activity that is responsible for loading all the restaurants. The, uh, the, the previous step before restaurant activity would be login activity. And here in the login activity, uh, as you can see, we have the login button and then we create the button listener. This is the code for the login button listener. And notice that when we log in the user, we create the login callback. So if the login uh, request is successful, then the server lets us know that the user is logged in. And at that point, we will need to progress the user to the restaurant listing. And that happens inside of the login callback. See right here, handle response. This is the callback that occurs when server says, yes, this user can log in. Then we create the intent to show restaurant listing activity, and then we start that activity. So, so the, the focus of this video would actually be the review of the restaurant listing activity class. And here it is. When the activity is started, the very first thing that we are going to do uh, is to create a query, the query that loads all the data from the restaurant table. Doing this in backend is, is actually very simple. First of all, uh, this is going to be the API call that loads all the data. Uh, there is a little bit of code here, but I'm going to break it all into individual pieces. So first of all, backendless.data is going to be your gateway to all data persistence tasks. And the method of returns an instance of iDataStore. So as you can see right here, there is iDataStore uh, generic for the restaurant class. The restaurant class corresponds to the restaurant table. Let me show you what the restaurant class looks like. So there, this is the restaurant class and it contains all the getters and setters and the private fields where each field corresponds to a specific column in the restaurant table. For instance, notice that we have collection of locations, we have cuisine, we have name, and some system level properties, updated, created, object ID, and owner ID. If I switch to the restaurant table and take a look at the schema, notice we have a collection of locations, we have owner, cuisine, and name. And then all the other, all the other columns like uh, object ID, created, updated, are system level columns. They are always added to every single table that you create in Backendless. So this class, the restaurant class, corresponds one-to-one -one to the restaurant table, which exists on the back end. Going back to restaurant listing activity, as I was saying, for the method of, you pass in the class for which you want to obtain iDataStore. And the iDataStore is returned from off. It contains all the methods that you can use to work with your back end. So for instance, here, take a look at the IntelliSense. We have find, find by ID, 
find first, find last, load relations, remove safe. So pretty much the entire CRUD, create, retrieve, update, delete set of methods to work with restaurant objects. In this case, we're using find because we want to send the request to the server to say, server, give me all the restaurants that I can, so that I can show them in the UI. And this is exactly what method find does. Notice that there are two arguments for the method find. One is the query, the other is the callback. So the query is interesting. In fact, query is created right here. It's an instance of backendless data query. Backendless data query, the constructor accepts query options. And query options is there because we specify that we also want to load related entities for the restaurant. Specifically, the entities that are referenced by the locations column. What this means is that Whenever we request a collection of restaurant objects, we're letting the server know that for every single related location would also need to be populated and returned back to the client. Here we have a list of restaurants. Notice that there is locations and some restaurants have locations. So what that code that we just reviewed does, it says not only return the restaurants, but all the related location objects would need to be included into the response. This way, we get the entire closure for all the restaurants and all the locations. The second argument in find is the callback. And this is an implementation of um, loading callback that, it, that extends async callback. This class is going to be used whenever a response is available from the server. And there is a method, handle response. This is the method that gets the actual response. Notice that the argument to this method is backendless collection that is a generic for the restaurant. This backendless collection will include a collection of restaurant objects where each object represents a record from the database. Now, this is actually very cool because we make a request to the database and what we get back is a strongly typed implementation of the restaurant objects where all the properties, getters and setters, are going to be available for you to use immediately. You do not need to do any additional parsing. You do not need to process any XML or JSON documents. You get live Java objects, in this case, uh, that you can start using in your application. Exactly the same approach is applicable to all client environments that we support. So if you were to build an iOS app, then you would be getting a collection of strongly typed either Objective-C or Swift objects. But here we're focusing on Java, so let's stick with that. So now that we have data from the backend in our application and it is being delivered through this callback, let's take a look how this data is actually rendered in the list view. To remind you, the list view it looks like this. This is a, a list view component. And uh, inside of the code, the activity that we're in, the activity class, restaurant listing activity, extends list activity, which is one of the classes in Android to assist you with rendering list-based data. There are some additional elements here to keep in mind. There is a list collection called total restaurants and there is a restaurant adapter. Restaurant adapter contains this list connection. You can see the, the adapter is being created right here and uh, the total restaurants collection is being passed into the adapter and then the adapter is being set as the list adapter for the current activity. Once we get the data from the server this collection of restaurants is being sent into the adapter through this add more items method. So we're populating total restaurants, which is now linked with the adapter, and then we not notify adapter about the changes. So at this point, everything that is being returned back is rendered in the, in the list component. The adapter itself is actually responsible for populating individual list items. Let's take a look at the adapter implementation. So right here in the adapter, the get view actually extracts data from the collection for the specific index and populates the individual elements in the list item with the data that we received from the server. Here for the individual view item, we have the restaurant name, the cuisine, and the number of locations. We get the actual restaurant object for the specific position, and we populate the data from that restaurant object in the individual text view items. The individual list view item looks like this. So here we have restaurant name, cuisine, and a number of locations. Going back to restaurant listing activity, there is another thing to uh, point out. There is an on-scroll 
callback and uh, the list view has the scroll listener and then what happens here as you scroll the list of restaurants there are only six restaurants but if there were more then backend list would assist us with paging because paging is actually built in the final step to this review is to understand how we go from the restaurant listing to the location listing in this module the restaurant list you will not see that code it's actually part of the next module which is location listing so let's take a look at the restaurant listing activity implementation in location listing it is going to be for the most part exactly the same code except for one difference there is on list item click method and this method is the callback that occurs whenever you click on a specific restaurant notice that this method overrides the base method in list activity therefore it is a built-in functionality that the list activity will provide whenever you click on an item in the list in here whenever you click on the restaurant what we do is we uh, pass on control to the location listing activity which is the uh, the new activity added in the location listing module and in order for that location listing activity to display its data we have to pass in specific restaurant that contains locations and that is done through the uh, by putting extra information into the intent so let's switch to location listing activity class and here whenever it is being rendered we take the restaurant it is being passed through the intent and we render information about the locations and that is done exactly the same way as we did with restaurants and then here we get the locations for the restaurant no remember that the locations were already pre-initialized for that restaurant and now we can initialize the adapter that we have here uh, for the current restaurant. Location adapter is responsible for rendering individual locations in a list in exactly the same manner as we did with restaurant adapter. Before we review location adapter, let's take a look what the UI for location listing looks like. So here we have listing of locations. It mimics the UI for the restaurants almost one-to-one. -one. And then for each individual item in locations, there is list item location and then here we display the city where that location is and the address let's go back to location listing activity and the adapter for location listing works like this once it is initialized then rendering an individual location requires getting the text view for the city and the address and then we get the location object and then initialize these items in the list view that's pretty much it. The, the pattern, as you can see, is exactly the same for rendering uh, a list item once you have that collection of objects from the backend. One additional element of this project I would like to review is the process of generating code for the classes which represent records in the database. These classes are located in the entities package and they are restaurant order, menu item menu, and location. As you can see, these classes correspond one-to-one -to, -one to the tables which we have in the back end, restaurant, order, item, and so on. And the structure of those classes is exactly the same as the schema of the corresponding tables. As I mentioned, these classes could be written by hand, but they follow pretty much exactly the same pattern where a property in the class represents a column in the table and there are appropriate getters and setters. And as a result, since the pattern is exactly the same, we added a code generator that can create all these classes for you without writing a single line of code. In fact, the code that is included into this project and every single module here was created by the code generator. So restaurant, class, order, and so on were not written by hand. And let me show you how to generate this code so you can start using it in your own projects. If I switch to Backendless Console, and this is this is our application it is important that the tables are created first and then for every single table you define the schema and this is what we already have in this particular project then click on the code generator and since we're working with android it is selected otherwise just select the client of your choice now notice under data management there is a checkbox that says java classes for defined data tables if this is what you select then the code generator will know that the goal here is to generate classes that would be mapped to the tables. Also select the ID of your choice. I'm going to select IntelliJ IDEA since my development environment is Android Studio and it is based on IntelliJ IDEA. Click on the download project button 
then backendless creates a zip file and returns it to you. So inside of this zip file, you will find a project with all the project files and all the source code, which represents the actual classes. So here inside of uh, the zip file, we have restaurant to go code gen. Uh, there are project files, there is a library, and then the source code is right, is right here. So here you go, all the same code that you saw in the actual project. Changing the package name is trivial, so you can just copy these classes into your project, change the namespace, and start using them. However, for the project that is being reviewed in these videos, you don't need to do that. This code has already been generated and it is done. So I'm just showing this to you so you can start using it in other projects that you built with backendless. Very simple and clearly, the more complex your schema gets, the more time this code generator will save for you. This is it. Hopefully you found it useful. Stay tuned for other videos in this series. Thank you and as always, happy coding!